So Iran's missile attacks on Erbil in Iraq, Idlib in Syria and then at Pakistan was uh, in the news last week. And when the Islamic Republic of Pakistan retaliated against the Islamic Republic of Iran, news pundits started speculating whether it would lead into an all-out war between the two neighbours who until now have had good neighbourly relations that go back to before the 1979 Islamic Revolution uh, in Iran, when Iran was still a monarchy. Let's just quickly recap what happened first and then give the analysis. If you want to help my channel, please subscribe and provide me with your feedbacks. Last week, Iran used some 11 ballistic missiles to hit a target in Erbil in the Iraqi region of Kurdistan. Iran claimed it had targeted an operation center of Mossad, the Israeli secret service. No hard evidence to back this up was provided. The missile struck a villa owned by a Kurdish businessman, uh, Peshro Dizai, killing him, his 11-month-old baby girl Gina, a housekeeper, and another Iraqi businessman, Karan Mikhail, who was uh, visiting his friends. Peshro Dizai's oldest son, Roj, aged 25, lost a hand in the strike, and his other son, Rawan, was slightly injured. Clearly a huge tragedy for the entire family, and still Iran has not provided any shred of evidence to remotely justify its missile attack. Next came a missile attack against a target in Idlib, Syria. Iran claimed the missiles were a precision strike against a training camp used by the Islamic State terrorists. Now, I don't have much verified information on the exact extent of damage in this attack. But just when everyone thought that was it, Iran fired more missiles along with drone attacks against the village in Pakistan. Iran claimed the operation targeted the militant group Jaysh al adl or the Army of Justice, a Sunni armed Iranian terrorist group that has often attacked, killed and kidnapped Iranian conscript border guards uh, near the Iran-Pakistan border. The victims again included children. But whereas there was no retaliation against, uh, against Iran other than verbal condemnations with the first two attacks, this time, unexpectedly, Pakistan retaliated. Pakistan said the target was a training camp used by Pakistani Baluchi separatists inside Iran. Again, innocent children were killed in the attack. The Pakistan Ministry of Defense issued a statement confirming the attack, saying it attacked a terrorist camp using missiles and drones, but didn't mention anything about Pakistan Air Force jet fighters crossing the Iranian airspace. But I have reliable sources inside Iran who have told me Pakistan Air Force JF-17 jet fighters, which are made by China, did cross deep into the Iranian airspace, both before the missiles were fired and after, although the planes themselves didn't fire. The reason the Pakistan Ministry of Defense didn't mention the uh, planes may be because they didn't want to further escalate the uh, situation. So let's get to the analysis bit now and most importantly see if all this would lead to a full-scale war. Now, it's not the first time Iran has fired missiles at Pakistan to bomb the armed groups operating from inside Pakistan ter territory. So why did Pakistan retaliate this time? There was a terrorist attack earlier this month on the anniversary of Qasem Soleimani's killing in Kerman, South Iran, where Soleimani was from. Tens of people were killed, hundreds were injured, uh, one family lost eight or I think nine members um, and most of these mourners were regime supporters who had turned up to commemorate Qasem Soleimani. So the IRGC wanted to show a retaliation. They had to, although it had accused Israel for the uh, um, attack, uh, for the terrorist attack, it chose to go for softer targets to show its might and strength. It also over-publicized the attack and boasted too much about how it had hit Pakistan. This put the Pakistan military in a difficult situation. They felt compelled to retaliate on a similar scale to save face amongst their own population. In fact, interestingly, some official Iranian news sites realized they had gone too far and had removed the story. Pakistan retaliation was super embarrassing for Iran and especially for the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guards. The first question that arose was, where was Iran's air defense? In fact, it seems there were no air defense by the Pakistan border. To further save face, the regime tried to deflect some of the damage by saying none of those killed by Pakistan were Iranians. An absolute nonsense that I don't really need to get into uh, here. 
And even worse, some regime supporters on the social media were saying, uh, oh, it was all uh, pre-coordinated. Uh, pre-coordinated to do what? To kill children on both sides? Why didn't you evacuate the uh, civilians before the pre-coordinated uh, attacks? The truth is, this was hugely embarrassing for the RGC. It was another case of the regime shooting itself in the foot and digging itself in a deeper hole. It showed how, despite all the hubris, how vulnerable Iran's military is. It also showed the lack of coordination between Iran's diplomacy institutions and its military, since the attacks both countries have now tried to soften their stance to de-escalate the situation and end the confrontation, which is the likely scenario, but it's important that the military and the diplomacy better coordinate themselves on both sides, otherwise there could be further um, unexpected confrontation. And as I'm speaking now, more senior IRGC commanders have been killed after an Israeli attack in Damascus. Once I have more information uh, on that, I may do another video. Um, thanks for listening to me and uh, I'll wait for, to hear your feedbacks.